What's going on guys, Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. Feels like it's been a while since I've been in front of the camera, been super busy, but on this one, we got an upright. So it feels like a very long time since I've been in front of the camera. Again, I do have a real job. The arcade stuff is a side gig, a side hustle. Um, I've been super busy at work, but also finishing off Robbie's ultimate PC build. Uh, the ultimate console i'm trying to get that out but i do still have my stuff up on offer up and let go and all that well let go is offer up but craigslist offer up and uh, facebook marketplace we do have a customer that requested a 32 inch upright it's kind of weird again people message me on facebook are like are you still doing arcades yes just a little busy but yes arcades are basically life so yes still doing them but again we did have a customer that messaged me on Offer up. It started off on offer up, went to Instagram. Actually, turns out that I know the person from an auction. Um, again, for my real job, I go to auctions to get stuff on discount. So, we actually seen each other, met each other at an auction about two or three years ago. He saw a couple of videos and was like, oh, wait, I think I know you. Wound up knowing us. Uh, we basically were at an auction for a restaurant. So, anyway, he messaged me. He said, hey, Vic, I do want an upright. I do want an arcade in my game room type basement. I believe that it is at his actual job. His big request was that he did want a coin door and he did want it where like you have to pay to play it. Anytime I get a request for a coin door, yes, I could do it with the Raspberry Pi, but it's not very user friendly when it comes to the coin operated stuff. Um, I do feel like he will also be using it for customers. So with that, I did suggest the Pandora's box. On this build, never did it before, but I do have it now. It is the Pandora 18S, 4,000 games on this Pandora's box. Now it's also crazy how like this build started. Um, I started getting a lot of messages on YouTube of a video I did a while back of Pandora's box versus a Raspberry Pi. This Pandora box honestly changes the game though. Um, my video was about a year old, so technology obviously changed. The big thing about that Pandora's box, what I believe I did was a 4S. Um, it couldn't play any consoles, it just played arcade games. This one changes the game. We got PSP on this. There's a couple of Dreamcast games. The Game Boy's on this. The NES. 4,000 games. Again, this Pandora's box is next level Pandora's box. So real quick, let's take a closer look at the actual cabinet, a couple of requests and all that. And we're going to also take a look at the Pandora's box. Off the bat, let's talk cabinet. 32 inch. This I have right now. Anytime it's in my garage, I do have these things on casters so I can move it around. Those are not built into the cabinet. It is on a dolly, kind of like that. So it is right now on a dolly. It won't be like that. It does make it taller with the dolly. But again, it is a 32 inch um, upright. Screen is 32 inches. Uh, customer wanted the Marvel versus DC um, artwork. Again, Game Room Solutions cabinet. Uh, we actually, I actually hit up Game Room Solutions as the customer wanted to add some stuff to the original print which is adding a couple of Latin flags to it. So Game Room Solutions are actually doing the artwork. Pretty nice job. We went through basically two proofs and then customer did approve it. So on the right side here, we have a couple of flags. On the left side, same thing. Couple of flags. Again, customer requested Marvel versus DC, but wanted to add the Latin flags to it. It looks pretty good. Can't lie, they did, a, they did a pretty good job. Again, we went through two proofs and uh, Game Room Solutions didn't charge me for the proofs or anything, so there you have it. Um, big thing is though that we did the marquee. I did the marquee, I gotta stop saying we. Um, marquee was pretty big, a pretty big deal. I didn't really want the anti-heroes because Game Room Solutions anti-heroes is spelled wrong. Somebody told me that the word heroes is spelled wrong. Um, so I did suggest let's put the restaurant logo we took out the address he did have the um um street name here basically took it out i put the word arcade and we have a nice marquee custom um so here we have the pr flag we have the columbia flag and then what i did is that since we have the flags like that i basically lined up the button colors to match the flag so as you can see blue red and white blue red and white yellow blue red yellow blue red so again uh able to change up the colors on the buttons and all that i kind of gave him the idea about that originally it was going to be an all white um then it went from all red to all blue but then i kind of like the idea of the flags because we did add it to the marquee so i suggested that 
so far so good again totally awesome leds we have the led underglow obviously on it and again we do have the coin door but not too bad definitely liking this a lot of people do like the marvel versus dc artwork pretty cool that game of solutions basically hooked it up with the flags um i asked them i said hey i could do the artwork i just need you to give me the side art they really weren't a fan of that. They said, we'll just do the work and they did it. Again, we got a 32 inch upright. This is running the Pandora's Box 18S Pro. Again, yes, Pandora's Box is a whole big deal about it. 3A is the official company of Pandora's Box. This is a knockoff 4,000 games, but it still works as intended. Again, any customer that wants to put these things in a re retail space where they want actual quarters to be entered, it's gotta be user-friendly, number one. Um, you know, the cool thing about these, and there's a lot of features with this, basically if you start a game after three minutes, it will exit out back to the main menu. So it is very user-friendly. Whereas a Raspberry Pi build, your customers or anybody, a friend, isn't gonna be able to just come up to here and then understand how to exit and then load up a game. And it's, it's a nightmare when it comes to that, again, only time I really suggest Pandora's box is if you are looking for something user friendly, keeping it easy, simple, like it's literally impossible to break this thing. Um, and it's very easy to navigate. And again, because we are doing coins on this, I do suggest the Pandora's box. The at least cool thing with this though, is that he does have the option of always upgrading to a Raspberry Pi. Buttons come with the Zinmo, so it's a very easy upgrade. It's literally, you know, about a hundred bucks just to buy the Pi and the SD card. So as far as people looking at these videos and saying, hey Vic, if I buy this, can I upgrade it? Yes, it's very simple. You have everything. The cabinet is the most important piece and the most expensive piece. All the other stuff, I mean, I can't really say that if it comes to PC builds, but everything else, I mean, you have about 80 to 90% of what you need minus the Raspberry Pi or minus a PC. So again, this is a great start. If he does wanna add more games and he wants to get a Raspberry Pi, it's not that crazy cost effective. If he wanted a PC build, then we gotta talk about PCs and you know hardware and all that. So again, this is a base. Figure another 100 bucks, I would put in a Raspberry Pi, I would put the 15,000 games on it, and I would give him two PlayStation controllers. Now the big thing, if you do follow me on Instagram, I do have in uh, my business, a friend of mine hooked me up basically with um, three arcade cabinets. We have an NBA Jam four player. It's a real NBA Jam. The great thing about this right now is the weight of this. It is not heavy. Uh, I even have a Marvel versus Street Fighter cabinet at the gym that he basically gave me to resell. And that thing is heavy. This thing right here, I was able to tip it over on my own. I was able to bring it up on its feet on its own. So about total weight, I'd probably say about 130 pounds in total right now. I don't want to ramble too much. I always do ramble, but a couple of things. Z313 um, sound system on this. So stereo sound with the subwoofer. Right on the bottom right, we do have the volume controller on this. So he'll be able to basically, if you wanted to play alone, you could put headphones, you could control the volume, you could turn it off. LED underglow, LED marquee. Again, all basic stuff. Big thing was the coin door. So this right now, the Pandora's box is set to money. You have to insert coins to make this work. You right now come in here, none of this works. Now also, yes, the control panel does have the coin buttons, but I basically don't have the ground hooked up to it, so you can't just press the coin button. You have to insert money for this. So again, we got the keys. This was an X-Arcade coin door. Really proud of this one because I definitely, the wiring on this is super clean. Again, using small zip ties, making sure nothing happens to it. Super clean. So again, if I just kind of trigger this. Now, the big thing is that a lot of customers don't know like, oh, how do you trigger the coin? I just got the coin in. Or if he was just kind of playing alone, it's gonna be a pain in the ass to keep opening up that door. I always think ahead. This one normally on the builds that I do, I usually put a coin button somewhere up here kind of like secret. So, you know, if you are wanting to play alone, you just come here and tap a button. Um, we didn't want to do that. We didn't want to do something visible so a customer could just kind of tap it. I still have that option though, obviously, right here, right behind this little piece, I do have a micro switch. So if you listen carefully, 
there is a coin button. Let's see if we can get it. It is literally right there. So again, I understand coin doors, they are cool. Again, if you are looking to do a retail kind of space, put this to actually get quarters. But if you personally wanna play with it, instead of you always taking out a quarter or opening up the coin door, there is always forever a secret switch. So if he wanted to just come around, literally again, just put your finger in, you gotta kind of find it. So it's literally here. Um, I do like the hinges on these doors, Game Room Solutions makes it clean. And as you can see, there's our micro switch. Boop. Again, linked basically to the coin door. You can see my wiring. We keep it neat, we keep it straight. We got the LED going across and it does give a good back glow. I'm gonna turn off the lights soon, but just to kind of give you a overlook on that, close up the door. Again, not going nowhere. Bottom door. Nice. We do have the subwoofer. This is bolted down, not going nowhere. We got our power switch basically wired up. Again, you can see the wiring, nice and neat. Using, you know, double edge, the uh, cable tie holders, great stuff, very cheap. It just keeps stuff very clean. And with this, Game Room Solutions hooking it up with the power. I shouldn't say hooking it up because they did forget the actual power switch in my order. But luckily with the arcades I was building, I have basically the basic PC one. So in and out, you basically power, plug this in, and everything turns on. No need to flip any switches, no need to hit any power buttons for TVs. That's why I always use ins Insignia TVs because they do turn on once you give it power. As you can see now, we do have coins, we insert some credits, so now I'm able to navigate the screen. There's a couple of shortcuts. If I press player one start, we could go into the search or I could go into the recents. I'll load up Street Fighter, button one, Basically, we're gonna get ready to talk about the Pandora's box. Give it a few, it's gonna load up, boom. And then we're in it. I do have three credits in. If I press player two start, it does player two, and now we have two players. You know what time it is, boys and girls. You know what time it is. We're gonna load it up. Again, hopefully it works, seal of approval. Again, left and right, obviously, and two. All right, not on the first try, but on the second try, we got the one-handed Hadouken to seal the deal. Awesome. And again, we do have the volume rocker here, so I can lower it, power button. So if you wanna actually turn it off, awesome. Very easy stuff. So again, 32 inch upright, Pandora's box. You guys, the effect of lights off. So again, LEDs always. I love the effect it gives on the marquee. Kind of gives you that glow in the dark effect, especially for the flags. Again, I set these always to fade. LEDs are LEDs. You could either set it to white or to fade. Again, we do have the underglow in the front. So as you can see, right on underneath. And then again, with the LED strip in the back behind the TV, you do have a back glow to it. So if I was to move this really against the wall, it would really glow up the wall. So again, little details always matter. Again, you can even see from here, that is just the LED strip. A lot of people have asked me, I only use one LED strip. That is a 16 foot reel, one LED strip. And the big thing is basically the way I always do it, I never cut LEDs. So as you can see here, it comes in from the cab, it drops down underneath, back up and in. This way, underneath, the glue will never really wear off and it won't droop down. So that is a big deal. Again, we do have these um, command strip down, so that's not going anywhere. Remote's not gonna go anywhere and the LED controller. So you can kind of see it right here, it's right there. So if we wanted to do, let's just say all white, the LED sensor is right here. So all white looks cool. Again, I'm not a fan of flashing, but uh, you know, you don't want somebody having a seizure. <laughs> if I do like the jump. RGB. Again, I never do jumps. I always like the fades. 
it's just much cleaner. And then again, you could slow down the fade speed. I think I had it a little bit too fast before. We'll slow it down. And again, it's all right here. This way the customer could basically just do it. Let me turn on the lights. Okay. So again, big deal, always keeping the wiring clean as possible. This right here is coming from, let me lower the music. This right here coming from the coin door, each slot, left side is player one select or a coin and then right slot is player two coin. So again, always important to kind of keep those separate. That comes right from the coin door. Um, again, Pandora's box. And then we have the wire looms. Awesome. Again, super clean. Should never have to open this, but very clean. Other big thing, I don't know why Game Room Solutions doesn't do it. They do it for the regular control panels, but this here, this latch wasn't here. I, I put it. Uh, I just feel like it's just more secure that way. Doesn't need it, but I just feel like it's more secure that way. But there you have it, 32 inch counter and bodega build. Marvel versus DC, Latin flagged out. So now real quick, we could discuss the Pandora's box. Again, customer requested coin door. Um, anytime somebody wants a coin door, you know, his idea, he even said to me, hey Vic, my friends wanna play it, they're gonna have to put money into it to play it. So anytime somebody requests something like that, I highly recommend a Pandora's box. I've done Raspberry Pi builds, um, it's just Raspberry Pi builds and friends just button mashing stuff. If you don't set the hotkey correctly, your friends could come over here, bang on the buttons, and then it'll exit out to the main menu, and then who knows what could happen. You might even break the SD card and wipe it. So anytime you're gonna do coin doors, I always suggest the Pandora's box, especially if you're gonna do a retail space where let's say somebody's waiting for their food and they wanna you know play while they wait. This Pandora's box is just easy to navigate. It is flawless. You gotta put a coin in to make it work and such. So I, I always suggest that. Big thing is user interface for Pandora's box is very simple to navigate. Um, whereas the Raspberry Pi, you know, some people definitely will get lost. But the very cool thing with this Pandora's box, and again, my video a while back, it, it technology advanced. Um, so these do play consoles. This even plays PSP. I'm more surprised about how this Pandora's box handles consoles when it comes to uh, pay per play. Um, you could set this Pandora's box or any Pandora's box to free play, obviously, but the way it handles the coin um, play, pay for play, um, very shocked by it. Basically right now, I'm waiting for the system to exit out on its own. What's great about Pandora's box is if nobody touches the machine for three minutes, the um, the game will exit out of itself and go back to the front end. So right now somebody could be standing inside the store and be like, oh, okay, cool, they got Street Fighter, awesome. Um, maybe months and go by, you don't change the game, which I've done that a couple times where I've put Raspberry Pis and then it's just one game and then every month you swap it out. It's cool, at least they know it, but this Pandora's box, again, 4,000 games. And what's great is after three minutes of nobody touching it, it will automatically go back into the main menu which your customers could basically pick one of the 4,000 games on it. So again, we are right now in retail mode for Street Fighter. Uh, I lost, I lost my quarters. I could put a quarter in, it'll register it, you press start and you start playing. But I'm right now just rambling so that it will automatically exit out into the Pandora's box menu. There it is, awesome. So not playing it or touching it for three minutes, it brings you back into the Pandora's box menu. As you can see right now, insert coins, joysticks don't work. Nothing works, you have to insert a coin to navigate the screen. Um, again, you could set these up to free play. If you do set it to free play, then your joysticks will work. But the big thing right now with this insert coin, which I personally like about Pandora's box, is that it will go down the list every five seconds or whatever. So you'll see right now, it's gonna go from this game, give you the nice little video to it, and then it brings it down to the next one. Leaving it on free play, it will just loop this game, which I wasn't a fan of. I'm kinda happy that we are doing credits for this because it's just gonna go down the list of the 4,000 4, games. So very cool feature. Again, you could literally just pick up the control panel. You come here, you press the reset button, not the reset button, the menu button, I should say. 
and then you could come here and navigate so you could see here we have one coin uh auto exit exit after three minutes uh select mode is after the insert after the coin is inserted um exit mode is cool you could basically long press the start button and it'll exit out so now if i press cancel i'll press the d brings us back and basically again i do have one coin inserted so i could navigate um a couple of shortcuts if i press the player one start goes into search i could go left and right on top of the tabs hit some categories i just want to show you real quick the exit method um in case he you know let's say you're playing it and you want to exit um basically you hold down player one it brings up this little menu and you could exit me right now with insert coin if i had extra coins it would show like a bunch of credits like before i started with four credits it would basically say that i had three credits left so i want to exit this i press the b or button two and it brings it back right now again no credits this doesn't work i can't navigate this so i'll put a credit in and the cool thing about this that I definitely want to show off is I was playing some NFL Blitz. This is the N64 version. So you can see the systems to it. Um, let's just see something. I'm under recents. If I press the player start, if I go by category and go left and right, it goes by like, you know, the systems N64, the Super NES. So let's just do like the Super NES real quick. Um, I don't know. We'll just play some Earthworm Gym. What's cool about how it works with systems is that it gives you five minutes. I think that's so cool. So yes, the Pandora's box plays uh, consoles, but because a game like this doesn't do credits and coins like an arcade game, it actually has a five minute timer on it. So as you can see right now, I'm playing some Earthworm Gym, which again was a console game. I'm dying right now, get off me. <laughs> dog biting me and basically every time you press start it will give you the four minutes and it pauses now what i did notice that if you are playing it and the time runs out it gives you i believe 30 seconds or a minute to insert a coin so again we are playing a console game on a pandora's box and i gotta say pandora's box did great as far as button mapping because it works great. I was playing N64 NFL Blitz two player, and that was like amazing. Again, NFL Blitz on a Raspberry Pi, as far as a Pi 3, it wouldn't really work that well. NFL Blitz, the real arcade ROM, is really meant for the, if you're using a PC, it'll work flawlessly, but on a Pandora's box, it doesn't have the arcade ROM, it has the N64 ROM. So again, somebody could come here play some console action if i press start we have four minutes left and then basically it'll just count down i'm gonna skip or i'll come back after about a minute is left so like right now again if i hit the pause button it says that there's one minute remaining i'm trying to get it so that it's going to request more money basically i wanted to show you so if you were actually playing doesn't matter how far you are into the game or how close you are to beating a level it basically will automatically just go dark and basically say, hey, you have to insert more money. So now I'm gonna insert a couple of coins so I can start navigation. Again, if I press like player one start, you could even search for a couple of games. But again, the big thing is that this does have like very 3D graphic games to it. I mean, you got Tekken 5 and Tekken 6. Um, these are PSP games, you can tell by the logo. So if I launch, let's say PSP, Although it's Tekken 6, it's a fighting game, it's marking it as a PSP game. So it just said five minutes. And the kind of thing about this is if I press player two start, it will basically activate player two. Uh, we had a couple of credits inside of it, so it did add 10 minutes. It said 10 minutes now. And now player two is active. And now we are able, it's right now actually doing it on its own, just like Eugene's um, control panel we did. And as you can see right now, player two gets to choose the world. Again, PSP Pandora's box retail. Look at this again. So again, Tekken is the type of game where you only get hit if you're actually kind of pushing there we go 
Again, it's a PSP game. If I press start, it'll show me nine minutes remaining. Again, I'll hold down, I'll exit the game. All my coins now are done, so you don't really have a customer that's gonna wanna exit because they lose the quarter. Just put a quarter back in. And again, I'll just do real quick, which I was playing before with some NFL Blitz. Again, that is the N64 NFL Blitz. And it was running it pretty well. The only thing, granted, it's an N64 game. You're gonna have to learn the buttons and the assignments to it. Um, so, you know, be prepared to put a quarter in just to kind of learn the button assignments to it. But it's like very well done. Like I'm right now using the arcade stick. So I could do like player two start. Uh, I'll do no record, no record. Let's just do spawn with the volume. Cause I know people are gonna see this video and be like, whoa, NFL Blitz. Yes, it is NFL Blitz, but it's the N64 NFL Blitz. This is not the real arcade NFL Blitz. It's basically a ported arcade game to the N64. Here we go. So again, trying to do it where I could show you. Oh, oh well, that was bad. <laughs> so again, using arcade stick, bun one, bun one. Good throw. I mean, uh, uh, listen. NFL Blitz, <laughs> my guys, NFL Blitz on a 32 inch upright, coin activated, N64. We got four minutes left to play this game. Let's go. Where are we at, where are we at? Good throw, boom. I mean, what more can you say about that? It is awesome. Now the one last little secret I do wanna share with you guys again, Pandora's Box 18S Pro. Um, I honestly went and I got it uh, on this like control panel thing from eBay. Basically opened it, gutted it. This is like the stuff that you could buy on eBay. And you know, it comes, you plug it in and all that. These buttons are pure trash. They are pure garbage. Not even worth saving. These are god awful. So what happened was I took it from here, basically took the guts, the wiring, and I put it here. Now, some people might look at this and go, oh shit, I could do the same thing. Yes, the only big thing that was very difficult was, again, this was all stock. Even the wire looming was stock. But player one, the wiring was too short. So I actually had to come in here, heat shrink 15 wires and extend. What player two's loom was long enough, but player one, I did have to re-shrink, re-solder, and rewire. So again, this right here was literally the insides of that. Just a little secret. So in case anybody wants to do a Pandora's box build, there you have it. This is set, ready to go. Again, Pandora's box, 4,000 games. Awesome.